an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. Now. now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Perfect. Ten professional chefs have faced their first challenge to prove to Monica Galletti that they can cook at the highest level. Now, they've been split into two groups. Today, five of them will face the final test to decide who is good enough to cook for Michelle Roux Jr. At the end of it, one of them will be going home. The pressure is always going to be high in this competition and you just got to take every day as it comes. If someone was to say, who is Laurie? Chef, that's it. So winning this would just complete me. My dreams and goals are really just to get to the top. You know, I want to get a mission and start. I want to be, I want to be the best I can be. How are you going to test them? Today, I'd like them to make us a dish using these marrow bones, to prepare them and cook them using any of the ingredients we've got here. How many chefs do you think would have actually dealt with marrow? If any of these five are going to go through and cook for Michelle, they need to be able to prepare this ingredient, even if they've never come across it before. The first thing I'm going to do is cook the marrow. We're going to pop the marrow out. These marrow bones have been soaked overnight. It draws the blood out from the inside of the marrow. So what's the best way of cooking it? The best way is to poach it in water, to fry it straight away. If you can imagine, it's, it's a lot of fat in there. If you put fat in a pan, it's just going to shrivel up. You can use it like that, but it's not the best way to present it. Well, they've got to keep one eye on the marrow pot, make sure it doesn't overcook. Then while that's cooking, that's when they've got to get on with the rest of their dish. They've got to think here. They've got to think on their feet. I'm going to serve mine with the seps. I'm going to use a bit of garlic, shallots, and a nice piece of toast. Can I feel? Sure. That's so delicate. Nice. Very nice. How do you know when it's ready? That should be slightly opaque, light touch of pink in there, no more than that. I have some parsley, some breadcrumbs. I'm putting it under the grill just to gratinate it lightly, and if it's still pink in the middle, it's going to finish cooking. How long have they got for this one? 12 minutes, Greg. Hmm. There you have it, Greg. Marrow bones on a crouton with seps. Right, let's see who knows what they're doing. Let's bring them in. Pastry chef Seb has only been cooking professionally for four years. But in the invention test, he impressed with an outstanding dessert. For the next challenge, my worst nightmare would probably have to say some sort of meat preparation, mainly because working as a pastry chef for the last year, I haven't really done a lot of meat, so I'm a little bit rusty on that. Seb, have you ever cooked bone marrow before? I have cooked bone marrow before, not by myself under the supervision of my executive chef. Good to hear that you've worked with Marabone before. Bad news is I'm expecting a very good dish from you. 12 minutes, off you go. Left. 
60 seconds left. Okay. Glad it's over. Yeah. Marrowbone is very high content in fat, so with a very fierce heat, as you saw, it's just going to melt and separate. Um, this is why the patty that you made was just not holding. This marrowbone we have here is only partly cooked. If you see the big pieces through that, they're still raw. Not your round, this, Seb. You, you knew how to remove the bone marrow OK, but you really didn't know how to cook it. I can't eat that. It's, it's, uh, it's raw. Even the way you cook the mushrooms bothered me because, you know, whole big mushrooms like that are never going to fry without slicing them first. Seb, I, I do like your presentation, but the only thing I could eat on there would be that toast. Thank you. Off you go. Thank you. That was hard. That was really hard. I don't think I've ever felt pressure like that, not even when I was at school doing my GCSEs. <laughs> Laurie is head chef of a seafood restaurant that has been awarded two AA rosettes. She cooked her prawns well in the first round, but the cream sauce and citrus salsa were not a successful blend. I'm really confident in my skills. I really am. I think I've gotten quite far um, just off my own ambition, so, yeah, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't confident. So, we want one bone marrow dish from you, anything you want, in 12 minutes. Whoa. Have you cooked and prepared bone marrow before? Um, I've only roasted it before and served it in the bone, so that's about it. Ah, OK. Well, you won't have time to do that in 12 minutes, no, will you? No, no, no. All right, well... Good luck. You're about halfway, just over six minutes left. When you started mincing the marrow, when you took out the pan, have you done that before? No, I haven't really. I just thought to myself, maybe um, make a kind of like a pate. Unfortunately, Laurie, it's just not enough marrow on here for me to get a clear taste. Um, I get a lot of salt. I get a bit of the of the garlic on there, but I'm not a big whack of marrow, which is what I'd like. Uh, the seps could do with a bit more cooking as well. What I think has been your saving grace is the fact your plate looks neat and it's presented well. That works. That works. We've got mushroom with a, with a hint of marrow. It would have been nice to have it the other way around. But I am really impressed, really impressed. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think I did OK. The ingredient had to shine, and mine kind of, like, faded away. But, yeah, I did, I did what I did, and I'm, I'm happy with it. Inspired to cook by his gran, sous chef Steve now has 10 years professional experience. He's already shown promise with his technically impressive prawn fritters. 
I'm very confident in my skills. I've done every section in the kitchen. Nothing really scares me. Even if it's something I haven't done before, I'll just try and do it to my best ability. Have you worked with bone marrow before? Uh, no, I haven't. Off you go. Cool. Halfway, Chef. Six minutes left. Are they cooking in there? They're going down to nothing. Yeah. Two minutes, Steve. All done? Yep. Steve, I realised you haven't worked with marrowbone before, but I commend you on the way that you worked. Your method uh, of cooking it, um, you had it in the oil, so you're basically confing that slowly in there, um, was just about right, because it needs steady cooking through a steady temperature, otherwise it will just melt. Steve, that marrowbone is how it should be. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It just melts in your mouth. And the breadcrumbs around it gives a lovely light crunch to it. Um, you've clearly shown that you've taken your chef's intuition and thought about how this could work for you. Cool. That's really good. Really good. Tint of garlic first, little saltiness, then the real meatiness of that bone marrow. I'm impressed, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think I've done myself justice, you know, and if I don't progress, I've done my best, and that's all I can ask for, really. David works as a head chef in France and dreams of opening an Alpine restaurant. But his combination of egg and chocolate left the judges questioning his palate. I feel very sick <laughs> at the moment, and um, my mind's pretty blank. Just can't wait to uh, get in there and get it done, to be honest with you. Big sigh there from you, David. Have you cooked bone marrow before? No, Greg. Do your best. Show me why you deserve to go through and cook for Michelle. Clear what I'm doing. It's fine. You need to relax. You just need to push this out. There you go, chef. Okay. That's embarrassing. Really do not have a clue what I'm doing. Halfway, which means you've got six minutes left. Three minutes left, Chef. Sorry, you can leave it there. Just gonna put some bread with on the side. I'll hold it. Cut a piece of bread, go on. Oh, steady. All right. Sorry.
looking at the state of this table, I'd say you'd never cooked before. Michelle <laughs> would not be having a good day if you walked past a table like this. Honestly, I don't normally work like that. No excuses. Um, you did a great job on the griddle because it was not that hot. You can see it's still held together. The big bit here, you can see it's slightly under, yet the smaller one's quite nice. You've got a massive bit of shallot, slices of bread on the side. It's just, it's not a nice no, plate. It's not, it's not a nice no. plate. I actually don't believe you work like this. I'm pretty sure you don't. Let's have a go at this. <coughs> There's still solid lumps of shallot in with the, the mushrooms. You've actually cooked the bone marrow OK. You've been quite gentle with it. The rest of it, I think we're going to have to draw a line under. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Intense. Oh, my God. As you can see, I'm still a bit, a bit shaky now. Monica said then she doesn't think I can cook because of the mess I made, and she's got a fair point. It's just because I panicked. It's my own fault. No excuses. Chichester-based Johnny has been working in professional kitchens for nearly 15 years. He also used chocolate in the last round, but with greater success. I'd rather stand out from the crowd than, than be in that crowd. I want to do something different, you know, to, to impress. Have you cooked bone marrow before? A couple of times. Right. Show us why you deserve to go through and cook for my boss. Halfway. Six minutes left, Johnny. Finished, Johnny? I'm finished, Greg, thank you. It's a good plate, but it's not yet perfect. Work on that presentation. You started adding things like this to your plate. It was already looking fine as it was. Johnny, that's fantastic. It's perfectly cooked. I love the garlic coming through that. There's so much butter, you feel so guilty with every mouthful you'd <laughs> eat of that. But damn, it's good. Thank you. Yum. Nicely seasoned, soft, beefy, buttery. Very nice. You're happy, mate, aren't you? I am. Take care. <laughs> Top of the world. Really good. There's a few little points which I need to brush up on, but yeah, and over the over the whole thing, yeah, I'm very pleased. Honestly, it was a good day. A few people let let me down, but I was otherwise I was I was quite impressed actually. Most of them did not know how to prepare the main ingredient today, yet they still managed to deliver the test. I agree. I, I absolutely agree. My favourite cook here today was young Steve. He's managed to deliver us a fantastic dish just by using his chef's intuition. He made my day being here today. Yeah, I loved him. He goes through, yeah? Oh, definitely. definitely. Good. Two else I like Johnny. Uh, he said he'd 
handled bone marrow before and it showed he was basting the whole thing with butter lots of butter serve the whole thing on a piece of toasted bread very nice if anything he needs to control himself he started adding big leaves of parsley in there he should have just stopped where he was i mean but it tasted wonderful didn't it i think he has definite definite potential in johnny nice to see you smile doesn't happen often but it's nice when it does johnny's through young steve's through can I suggest another name? Go on. Laurie. She wasn't sure how to cook the, the marrow. In fact, she had the pan too hot, it was getting smaller. Her chef's brain took over. From adversity, she actually managed to deliver a decent plate. Her presentation was wonderful, and it's what saved this for her. Are you willing to put Laurie through to cook for Michelle? Yes, I'm willing to put Laurie through. We've got one place left, and we've still got David and Seb. Seb tried to make patties, but with that heat, there's no way that this marrowbone was going to hold together. I want to go all the way in the competition. I feel disappointed if I went home now. Obviously, I don't want to go home. David managed to at least cook some of the bone marrow, but he had rubbish and mess everywhere. From his work methods to the final plate, I was not impressed with David. I'd like another shot at it. I'd love to cook something I know what to do so I can show them that I can cook. Neither did very well today. Is there one here that you would give a chance in front of Michelle? Yes. One of you is leaving us today. The chef leaving us today is... David. Not been able to cook for Michelle's pretty, pretty gutting, but I couldn't even impress his sous chef, so that obviously would have been a bit of a nightmare. One or two of you have not had a very strong round. You need to prove yourself worthy to be here. There are classics that should be part of every professional chef's repertoire. And Michel Roux Jr. is looking for chefs who aspire to cook them at his two Michelin star level. The classic recipe I want our chefs to cook today are Oysters Kilpatrick and Oysters Rockefeller. Oysters Kilpatrick, a national treasure of Australia. True delicacy. Oysters Rockefeller, named after John Rockefeller, the American millionaire, because the sauce was rich. Michelle's dish combines two classic oyster recipes. The Kilpatrick oysters are encased in a fine blend of brioche crumb and smoked bacon. The Rockefellers are served with spinach and a pastis cream sauce. Oysters are traditionally served cold. This test will determine which chefs are able to cook them with precision. First thing to do, open the oyster. Get your oyster knife in here and lever it open, applying pressure on the point. It really would be criminal if they didn't know how to open an oyster. And that beautiful oyster should be intact. I'm now just going to sear them in their own juices for about 30 seconds, no more. It just intensifies the flavor. This is critical. They must not overcook the oyster. We're talking a matter of seconds and this dish could be ruined. Coming up to a simmer and off, straight off immediately. For the Rockefeller, we need the sauce. We have this intense oyster liquor, finely chopped shallots, and then this lovely pastis or perno. It's got that real good kick of aniseed. 
that has to boil down and then we add the cream. Mmm, it's good. And now with the spinach. I want to see brown overcooked spinach. A little bit of nutmeg. And moisten it with a little bit of the cream. The spinach needs to be fairly coarse, not a puree. To this, I add a little bit of chopped parsley. It is a balance of flavours. I don't want one overpowering the other. And now we sit our oyster on top. They have to go back into the shells the same way as they came out. It's that sort of attention to detail that makes the difference. Now the sauce. The egg yolk is going to give the sauce more richness and it's going to give it a lovely glaze and colour. You know, you can't skimp on the sauce here. It has to be brimming. Now for the Kilpatrick. I want this bacon quite fine. Mmm. There's something about the smell of bacon. The fat has rendered, it's starting to go brown. That's it. This is what we're looking for, a sand texture, a crumble. That's what I'm going to be sprinkling on top of the oyster. For the bed of the oyster, I'm going to be adding some Tabasco and a bit of Worcester sauce. We have a lovely crumb sand, and that's going to crisp up under the grill. To this, I add just a tiny bit of butter, just a smidgen. And now, these go underneath the grill. The glazing of the oysters really is the last second, the last job to do. You, you can't hang around. They're ready, they get served. OK, that's it. Beautiful aromas coming out. There we have it. Three oysters Kilpatrick and three oysters Rockefeller. I just hope that our chefs will be able to recreate this dish properly. Butterflies in my stomach. It feels like the first day of school. <laughs> I'm cooking for Michelle Rue Jr. It's, it's a dream. I want to do it perfectly, and I want him to enjoy it. I feel like I'm here now. But this is really where it starts, and um, this is where the cooking begins. If you are serious about this competition, now is the time to show it because we are taking it up a notch. You now are going to cook one of my favourites. Oysters Rockefeller and Oysters Kilpatrick. I am expecting perfection. This is just the first of two classic tests. And at the end of those tests, one of you will leave the competition. One hour, off you go. confident in certain areas of classic cuisine. Maybe not in all of it, but I have enough experience and enough potential to take any challenge and do well. Wow. 
I'd say. Do you understand the theory behind hot oysters? Yeah, I do understand the theory of hot oysters. I've eaten hot oysters before. Um, I've worked in a seafood restaurant. I was trained in a seafood restaurant. I've never cooked them before, but I've seen them being done. What do you now want to want to prove to us? I'm not just a pastry chef. I don't want to be a pastry chef. I want to be a good chef. I want to prove that what I've got, what it takes to go the distance. And even though you look a little bit nervous, that's just the occasion. It's not the dish. Not the dish, just the occasion. Which I'm sure you understand and get quite a lot. So I'll be fine. Seb has mucked up on three of his oysters. They look as if they've been chewed up and spat out again, which is such a shame. I just hope Seb can overcome those nerves, because deep down, I think he is a good chef. Fifteen minutes have gone. Cooking for Michelle Jr., this is a high standard, the highest standard. If I hold my nerves, keep cool and calm and collected, uh, I think I can impress. All right, Johnny. Hello. When did you know you had to be a chef? From a young age, when I started about 15, um, I just I got right into it and I loved it. Every day's different, every day's a challenge. You know, there's always new things on the horizon and if I ever got an opportunity, um, I'd grasp it. I'm 29 now, so I would really like to prove myself. 29, you've virtually passed it. I know, I feel it sometimes. <laughs> time, time to put your slippers on. Johnny took his time to open the oysters, but they're all perfect. Now he just has to cook them properly, and I'm sure he's going to give us a really good dish. Half an hour left, guys. Classics have to be perfect, and that's what's kind of daunting about this challenge, especially with him being a classical French <laughs> chef. It is going to be, like, high-pressurised. Right, Laurie, have you been trained in the classics? My experience is from myself, really. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really had any influence from anyone professional, so I don't have maybe the finesse or those classic techniques, but I do know how to cook. Where do you see yourself in a few years' time? I think I've taken it as far as what I can on my own. I definitely don't know everything, so I want to learn. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Laurie. Laurie, not classically trained at all, but she's not phased by this. She's trusting her instincts, her intuition. Uh, that could stand her in good stead. I think cooking for Michelle or Junior, I think anyone would be lying if they won't be nervous and won't feel the pressure, but I'm confident in anything I cook, even if it's a classic dish or not. Hi, Steve. Hi, Chef. How are you? How does this uh, recipe fare, then? Um, it's probably not, if I'm honest, it's not my my bag, but um, I'll just try and use my taste buds and just sort of use my, my hopefully, my brain and my knowledge, really. I'd love to know what your what your dream is. My dream is just to be successful and be the best and just cook good food, um, and I want to be the best. I don't think it's, in this world there's no point doing something if you're not committed and you don't want to be the best, especially in this job. You know, I'll take all criticism on board. I'm not a sort of chef thing so you, you, you talk rubbish. I just take it all on board. I'm like a sponge. I just absorb it and just crack on. And just trying to like, just trying to be improving myself all the time. Good. Got to go, Steve. Got a taxi coming at half seven. <laughs> Steve is exuberant and loves food. You can see that. But I don't think he's opened many oysters before because some of them look a little bit chewed up. It's your last ten minutes, please. Listen, you've got one minute left. Stop, your time's up.
We asked you to cook oysters Kilpatrick and oysters Rockefeller. The oysters should be cooked through, but not overcooked, gratinated to perfection, and with the addition of a garnish of beautifully fried leeks. Steve, you first. First off presentation, Steve. They should all be the same way to make it easy for the customer to eat the oyster. The bacon in there is far too big, too chunky. It should be a crumb. Rockefeller's lovely. There is a tang in there, there's a slight taste of perno, but they are just backing notes to that nice, soft, salty, sweet oyster. Well, I could do a dozen of them. Your Kilpatrick oysters are cooked properly, but the breadcrumbs haven't been gratinated or crisped up enough. No. They're not right. I tried my best, but just silly mistakes. You know, just keep me head up and don't get too down about it, because otherwise I'd be depressed. <laughs> Jolly. Very neat presentation. Couple of things, though. The oysters come to the customer, they should be seasoned perfectly and have the right level of acidity. You shouldn't need to put a piece of lemon on the plate. Secondly, I asked for fried leeks. I've just got a few token, almost black pieces of leek there. The Kilpatrick have got a little bit too much crumb. It has got a good kick. You can taste that Worcester sauce and you can taste the Tabasco, but not too much. Well judged. I think the oysters have been beautifully cooked. You're not far off. Your Rockefeller, it's rich, creamy, slight bit of acidity. Maybe a little bit too much acidity. I'll eat them all. If you get good feedback, it's amazing, you know. It sort of lights the fire inside you. It keeps it burning. It gives you a bit of drive to prove again what you've got. Right, Seb. I watched you open the oysters, Seb, and you look very nervous, and uh, I think it shows. Three of those oysters looked mashed. Take your time when it's like that, yeah? Your leeks are overcooked, you can see that. In fact, they look a bit pitiful at the bottom of the plate there. <laughs> Kilpatrick, you could have a little bit more crumb in there on top just to, to crisp it up. The bacon is cut really small and fine, which is nice. Your oysters are cooked properly. Little bit too much Worcester sauce there, but um, not a bad attempt. The spinach does need seasoning, and there's bits of shallots in there that need more cooking. I would eat those, but those Rockefeller are far from perfection. I managed to show a bit of skills with Michel Roux today, yeah, definitely. Enough skill that he's got a little bit of confidence in me. Laurie. I think that's beautifully presented. The oyster shells in the correct manner. Super fine julienne, crispy, blonde, lovely. Mm. The Kilpatrick is perfectly seasoned. The crumb is crispy. The bacon has been chopped up super fine, which is nice. It's spicy. It's got the depth of flavour. Mm. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Laurie, but the, the Rockefeller does not explode on your tongue. It actually lacks flavour. It lacks a perno tang and it lacks seasoning. It doesn't give you a kiss. It steps up and shakes your hand. I think I could have done better. It's a tough one, though, because it's, still, it's quite hard to find at the balance. Is it under-seasoned? Is it over-seasoned? You know, there's such a fine line, and I don't really know it yet. Now, you are going to cook your choice of a classic dish, a dish that shows off your skills. At the end of this, one of you will be going home. One hour, off you go. OK, Laurie, what's your choice of classic dish? I'm going to do Sole Veronique. Sole and grapes with sauce. Yeah. I had Sole Veronique and fell in love with it for the first time last week. Oh, OK. Is it a particular dish that you serve at the restaurant where you're I working did it, now? I did it once as a starter, but I kind of modernised it to my own way. I'm definitely making it a lot lighter than classic, definitely. I'm not doing a velouté or anything like that. I'm just doing a reduction with the cream and the wine. I've decided I was going to put basil with it as well because I like to do my own little thing to things sometimes. You're going to see it's quite vibrant um, and the flavours are just going to liven up on your palate. You've got a lot to live up to with this. OK. Laurie works in a fish restaurant. You could see that beautiful filleting of fish. I just hope she can cook it just right, because lemon sole, if it's overcooked, can be cotton wool. I have to do this right, I really do. I didn't choose something that is over the top, so if I can't get this right, you know, I'm, go I'm not going to look good at all. You've had 15 minutes, quarter of an hour gone. This is the dish properly showcasing skill and knowledge as a chef. Follow the recipe, it can't go wrong. OK, Seb, what are you cooking as your classic dish? Cannon of lamb wellington with buttered summer vegetables and roasted potatoes with a lamb and elderflower jus. Mmm. Lamb and elderflower jus. I think elderflower's got a nice, subtle taste to it and I think it complements the rest of the flavours in my dish. Is this a dish that you've cooked time and time again? To be honest, I've never actually done this specific dish. I've done all the components of this dish together, but not with lamb. <laughs> this is uh, the right time to experiment? I think any time is the right time to experiment, really, if you're confident enough, and hopefully I am confident enough to do it right and do it well for you. You're filling me full of confidence, Seb. Good luck, mate. Thank you very much. I am surprised that Seb is using lamb in a Wellington. I've never come across that. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to work. That is going to be a push in an hour. You're halfway. You've got half an hour left. Right, Johnny, what classic dish are you cooking for us? Uh, lobster thermidor, uh, saffron risotto and a roasted lemon. I love lobster. It's delicate, it's got good flavours. Um, and I just think today uh, I'm going to add a little twist with the saffron risotto, something a little bit different, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Johnny's dish is going a little bit crazy. How do you balance cheese, risotto, lobster and lemon? Skillfully, hopefully. There's a lot of things in there that could go wrong, you know, undercooking it, overcooking it. 
not getting your sauce bang on. The risotto's got to be al dente and it should marry up pretty nice. Okay, Steve, what classic dish are you cooking for us? Roast chicken with petit pois à la française. Well, chicken breast in itself isn't a classic, but the petit pois à la française, yes, yeah. I'd say, is a classic. Yeah. This is my take on, on a classic, so I'm doing it differently. So I want a few little surprises in there for you. But you're confident with it? You've done yeah, this before? I'm confident, yeah. It's a dish that I love to eat, I love cooking. It is a big risk. I've got to cook the chicken bang on, I've got to, you know, I've got to make sure the, the vegetables season nicely, um, I've got to make sure my little things in the fridge are going to be Ooh. how I want them to be. There's a little thing in the fridge. I'm going to crack on with this, do it to my best ability. I hope you like it. He's doing French peas, he's doing a chicken. I hope it's not too simple. I hope he's got some clever surprises. Because otherwise, we've just got chicken and peas. And as much as I like him, that's not going to be enough. Last 10 minutes, guys. Last 60 seconds. Time's up. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Steve has made roast chicken, served with boudin blanc, and his take on petit pois à la Française. Petit pois à la Française are classically braised peas with chicken stock, bacon, lettuce, onion. It's quite a rich dish. You have made it to your interpretation as a light dish. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Chicken, beautifully cooked, moist, crisp skin. Your boudin blanc, or your little chicken mousse. You've not just poached it, you've pan fried it as well to give it a different texture. Gosh, there's, there's, so, there's even little details of deep fried tarragon leaves. For me, there's one thing missing on there, and that's a jus, to bring it all together. And that would have brought the dish right up there to the top, top level. But this is knocking on the door, mate. Thank you. That is absolutely stunning, my friend. Sweet pea, a little bit of salty, crispy skin on the chicken. Chicken is moist, but inside that chicken mousse, you've got truffle flavour. <laughs> it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. Thank you. I'm speechless because it's just amazing comments. Like, I didn't expect it at all. Um, I was confident what I was doing, but still, it was amazing. <laughs> Johnny has chosen to serve his lobster thermidor on a bed of saffron risotto, accompanied by a roasted lemon. Johnny, for me, a risotto should be served in a bowl, not with half a lobster on top. And as a customer, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, where are my claws? I've paid for a lobster. Where are they? The lobster is sweet, succulent and tender, well cooked. The Mornay sauce has got a little bit of mustard in. You can just get a hint of the cheese in there as well, which is good. It's, it's a good lobster thermidor. Yeah, it is good. But sitting on top of a risotto which is dry, for me, doesn't work. Sorry, Chef. A little bit of cartilage in there, which, which shouldn't happen. We'll forgive you. Tastes heavenly. Your cheese sauce just gives a little bit of hint of tanginess, and then you get that sweet, lovely lobster afterwards. I love that. Great lobster. Risotto, I think, was always a bad idea. Gutted. 
Yeah, really gutted. Risotto's blowing me out of the water, has let me down, big style. Laurie has made Sol Veronique, which has been garnished with amaranth herbs and drops of grape and basil jus. The sole is very delicate, it's just right. The sauce is, I feel, just a little bit too heavy, but the grapes are peeled, which is a good touch. And what I think really balances this dish out perfectly are the few drops of grape and basil juice. It brings a freshness to this dish. It certainly is up there with one of the best Veronique dishes that I have tasted. Whoa, really? Very good. Fish is very, very soft. Mashed potato is buttery. I think aesthetically, it's a work in progress. But I do applaud a chef who manages to bring grapes, fish and butter and mashed potato together. <laughs> I'm very happy, I'm very happy. I just feel humbled that they would say those things about my food, I do, I just feel humbled. Seb's lamb wellington has been wrapped in a mushroom duck cell pancake and served with roasted potatoes, carrots, leeks, asparagus, and a rosemary elderflower jus. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that lamb went in with about 15, 20 minutes to go. Yeah, it did. Um, which was never going to work. Let's have a look at it. I'm sorry to say, if that came up to me in your restaurant, I would send the lamb back, because I'd want it more cooked than that. That elderflower giving something slightly floral, slightly sweet, against a rosemary background in that jus, I think is lovely, clever, and quite original. Thank you. The pastry is not cooked enough, it's soggy, and the pancake there is very, very thick. The mushroom duxelle, chopped mushroom, has got an overpowering taste of rosemary. It's far too strong. The lamb jus, I'm surprised. Uh, it actually works. But um, obviously the lamb wellington in under an hour is really pushing it. And it's just not right. Happy, but disappointed. Relieved, but stressed. <laughs> The standard here today was very good. Yes, there were errors, but I genuinely think that you know, all four of those guys are talented chefs. There is one, I think, quite precocious young talent, and that is Steve. Wow. Steve's interpretation of Petit Poil la Francaise was a very modern, eclectic way of doing them. But it worked. It showed a lot of character, and it showed a lot of imagination. We've got a contender for the, for the title, Michelle. I have got definitely got more to give. There's no point in peaking too early, so I've got more to learn and more to, to, to give, really. Steve should definitely be cooking again for us. Laurie's Sol Veronique, her choice of classic dish, I thought was really good. The cream sauce, ever so slightly too thick, but with the basil and grape jus, that really brought the whole dish together. I'd never seen that before, and I think that was a really inspired touch. This is the best, the best and biggest thing that's ever happened to me. And um, I just want to do myself proud. It's everything. It's everything to me. I'd like to see Laurie cook some more. Laurie and Steve go through. So either Seb or Johnny are leaving us. Seb's oysters were not the best. He did mash up three of them. His lamb dish was very rushed, was severely undercooked. That's not fine dining. That's not finesse. That jus made with rosemary and elderflower shows me he has a creative mind. But is that enough to put him through? 
I've had sleepless nights over this competition so far and I don't want it to be for nothing. I can't ask for anything more in the world right now than to get through to the next round. I don't understand why with Johnny, after a classic test in which he took two classic oysters and did them very well, he then did another classic of lobster thermidor and put it on top of a saffron risotto. It didn't look right at all. Johnny has obviously got the knowledge, but there are little errors that have crept in, which gives me doubt. I hope I've done enough to stay in. If I get the opportunity, I'll have to raise the bar. There's obviously potential here, we agree. Who could set the competition alight in a quarter-final? For me, the choice is simple. There is talent in front of me. I'm sorry that one of you has to go. Decision has been made, though. The chef leaving us today is... Seb. Thank you. I think the judges made massively the right decision. I think I gave myself too much to do. You live and you learn. Congratulations, you are quarter finalists. Very lucky. Very, very lucky. Skin of my teeth. Over the moon, it's amazing getting through to dream come true. I'm quarter finals now, I can't believe it. It means so much. I'm feeling like, you know, I can do this, I can really do this. Next time, the five remaining chefs are back to be tested. Bits of that fish are still see-through, and I would send it back. Before Michel Roux Jr. sets them a classic recipe. This is a really difficult one. They have got their work cut out. Now is the time for you to deliver. I don't really need to tell you this. It's no way near the level that we're looking for. <laughs> 